Hey, Nico from VoiceFlow here. In this video, I will talk about another way to integrate your VoiceFlow assistant into your, um, let's say, application or even as a standalone app on your desktop. So for this, today we will use Electron. Uh, in this project, we are using Electron and some HTML to just generate uh, a spotlight, sort of. And uh, ultimately, we will uh, interact with our voice flow assistant. So the, the, the assistant itself is pretty simple. What we are using is our uh, knowledge base using the uh, API, the knowledge base API, with a query request. And we are just limiting the response to one chunk. Um, we have some conversion here. So basically, uh, uh, just to um, use the uh, AI step if we don't have any answer from the knowledge base. So just basically using the uh, LLM as a fallback in case we don't have a way to answer the user with our document in the knowledge base. We have a bit of JavaScript to extract the source from the chunk. We also use uh, a score verification or validation. Uh, what we want to do here is be sure to return a knowledge base answer if the score is higher than 0.79. If that's the case, then we will use this prompt. And as you can see, we do some formatting. And um, because we are um, we are going to use uh, Markdown in our Electron app. And for the uh, KB, we want to be sure to share the source we've extracted from our JavaScript. Um, so the user will be able to click on the link and have uh, a preview window with the document. So how it looks like on the code side. So we have the main.html, which is just the HTML with everything we, we need to do that input field, so the, uh, the spotlight. We are using the open send, um, and we are loading the render.js. In the main JS, we have a bunch of functions. We are obviously loading the uh, all the electron um, library or uh, function we need. Uh, we are using Axios because we are making a request to the uh, dialog API. So for this, we need the uh, VoiceFlow API key, and we are using the uh, press the uh, .env template here. This is the only thing we need in that .env. Um, what else? For the user ID, we are using a node library, a node matching ID, machine ID, which will basically give us uh, a unique ID for the machine. So. Every time the user will use this app, we will be able to identify, or at, at least on this machine, we will be able to get the same user ID. So it's handy because we are also saving the transcript. So we want to be sure to save that to the corresponding user ID. For the username, we are using the uh, os.userinfo username. So that's also a uh, including node, you can get access to the uh, OS model or library. And uh, that's how we get the uh, username. So we have a bunch of animation. I will not go too deep into this, but mainly what we want to do here is as soon as we show the uh, input field and we make a request, as we are going to display the text and expand the windows, we need to handle that into some um, some animation. For the preview, this is uh, whenever we have a link in the uh, returned, uh, return response. Uh, if the user click on the link, we will open that 
into a new window. Um, so a, a sort of a preview window, and we are loading the, uh, the URL. We also have a context menu, so that will be the right click. So the user is able to, uh, will be able to, um, to copy a part of uh, all the full response. Um, this is mostly ND for, let's say, code, for example. And the perform search, this is where we are using the dialog API to send the question to our assistant and ultimately get a response. Uh, everything else is just starting the app. Whenever we close the, uh, the app, the, the windows or the, we quit the app and we also have a safe transcript. So this is, this one is using the transcript, uh, transcripts API. And again, we are sending the uh, user ID for the session ID. Version ID is the uh, dev or production. And the project ID is your uh, project ID. So if I go right there, uh, everything is in the config. So as you can see, uh, we have a config.json. And in that file, we will set the project ID, version ID. Uh, why it will be the... Uh, the, the wipe of the spotlight. Delay, this is the time for the uh, animation. Shortcut will be the, um, uh, the shortcut to show and hide the spotlight. And open URL is a way, so if we go here, uh, you can set that to preview. Or if you set that to anything else, we will instead open the, uh, the browser on the, uh, on the machine, on the computer, uh, instead of having a preview window. So that's all the setting you need. Again, project ID, version ID, either is development or production, the white for the spotlight, the delay for the animation. This is in uh, milliseconds. Shortcut, here I'm using uh, common T, and uh, open URL set to preview. On the render side, yeah, mostly uh, same thing here. It's mostly to handle the animation. Um, and I just look at it if I can see if we have something interesting. Uh, this part is basically just a bunch of a random prompt because whenever you will uh, load the or show hide the spotlight, we will randomly pick and choose one of those. Just again to add some uh, randomness to this. So let's give it a try. Oh yes, the last one is the style.css. So this is everything to stylize the um, the uh, input field and the the spotlight itself. So if I run npm start, we will launch the uh, launch the uh, spotlight. So as you can see, let's uh, reduce that. So this is the prompt, and uh, as you can see, if I focus, get the focus, and go uh, elsewhere. I've got like a random prompt. Uh, what I can do is, okay, tell me more about VoiceWall. We are sending this to our VoiceWall assistant and then get the answer. Here we go. As you can see, we are showing the text with uh, or the response with uh, a, little, uh, a little animation and we are uh, expanding the view as well. For this one, we don't have any markdown, but I can do something like, uh, how can I get a random number between 2 and 42, for example? And for this one, same thing here. We don't have this in the knowledge base, but we are using LLM, so we will get a JavaScript code because that's also part of the prompt. We are saying that if the user asks for a code, we want to use JavaScript. And this is what we got here. Uh, this is the code and the um, the context menu here, as you can see, I can select and copy this. So only this part, so I can copy and pass that in my JavaScript step. And the last one might be, for example, uh, how can I, or yeah, how can I add my assistant to my website? And this should uh, fetch an answer from the knowledge base, because this is something, this is a document we've added to the knowledge base. And uh, ultimately, we, we will also get a link to the article for uh, to give the user more information. So here we go. We have the instruction to uh, get the uh, snippet code. 
you can see here we have this body, which is a markdown code tag. So the, the formatting and the styling is respected. And here, if I click right there, I can preview the article straight from the spotlight. And again, with the shortcut, I can show and hide this whenever I want. I can refresh as well. Pretty handy whenever you uh, want to share your assistant as an app, for example. And so user will always have access to your knowledge base, to your assistant um, from just a, a shortcut. So that's that's the, um, the video for today. And um, I will share this uh, project link in the comments. And the, um, the full code, all the code is available on our repo.